understand why I have been procrastinating making this video for a while. I also feel like I start a lot of videos off with that, but it's because I get very ambitious in my mind of what I wanna do, and then the actual execution, hard to handle. I am in desperate, desperate need of a cleaning out of my entire life. We have this whole drawer of leggings that I truly pick and choose from, most of which I don't even like anymore. Tops that I refuse to wear to my workouts, but I keep here anyways because I'm too self-conscious to get rid of them to replace with crop tops. A lot of socks as well. This whole absolute disaster, which we do not even need to talk about or address. Truly, this is me just um, trying things on in the morning, not knowing what to wear, putting it back on the chair. Like, why do we put chairs in our rooms? This is what they're meant for, and it's horrible. <sighs> the closet. Now, I love this closet because it's spacious. I've never had a closet that I could even peek a toe into. So like, this is a dream come true. But that does not mean I need to fill it to the brim. Just because I have the space doesn't mean I need to use it. And in fact, it's probably a curse. I have been working so hard lately to just focus on building more of a capsule wardrobe. Really trying to find a lot of clothes that are going to last a long time, are ethically and sustainably sourced. A lot more neutral colors, things that are timeless and can always kind of complement each other. I just kind of realized I was having like bad spending habits and I would get very sucked into typical fashion trends and I'd see something and I'd love it because I felt like everybody was wearing it in the moment and then I realized two months later maybe this really isn't my style and I probably just got it because it was in at the moment. I'm trying to go past that and right now I'm really trying to go through all of my clothes, donate what I don't need, clean it out, clear my space, clear my mind. It's like a fall spring cleaning. So I figured I'd take you along for the ride. We'd clean out my closet and also make it a little bit more fun for you all, answer a few questions along the way. I also totally planned to change my outfit before I started recording this because I was like, oh, this doesn't really look that good on camera. But I feel like that's kind of defeating the whole purpose of this video. But the whole outfit is cute. So know that I look a little bit put together. I put an effort, I promise. Thankfully, the sweaters are all taken care of. There's all of the spaces because obviously I'm wearing some. Most of them are on the yellow chair, let's be honest. But this, done dusted, covered. Don't have to worry about it. Checking things off the list, dun dun dun. Looking at tops like these though, I've thrifted most of these, which I'm very happy about, but this is what I mean when I say, like trying to build a little bit of a capsule wardrobe because these are just white tank tops, a white bodysuit. Super easy for layering. You can put this under a sweater, instantly make it a little bit cuter. You've got yourself a nice little collar here. So these we can probably move on from. Honestly, I don't think I like this shirt at all anymore, so. Item number one. Question number one, how do you deal with night food cravings? This is actually a fantastic question. First one I saw. This used to be a really big problem of mine. I had a really, really bad problem with always, like every single night, going to the pantry, picking out probably some rolled gold pretzels. Something delicious. Cheez-Its, animal crackers, dried mangoes even were always a go-to, but it kind of started to become a bit of a problem. And it took me a really long time to realize, maybe I should be looking into this. Like, there's nothing wrong with having any of those things, but why is my body constantly wanting to snack so much at night? So I kind of started to evaluate what my eating habits were actually like throughout the day. Sometimes I would maybe wake up late. I would only start my day off with coffee and then kind of move into lunchtime, get caught up in work. And then all of a sudden I'd realize, oops, it's dinner time. I need to have my dinner. Long story short, I was not giving my body enough nutrients throughout the entirety of the day. So when nighttime would roll around, my body would say, hey, Taylor, there was a lot of things that we didn't get all day long. And now, we're really craving them, but you probably don't have the energy to sit down and cook yourself another meal. So what's the easiest thing that you can grab? Your pretzels, your goldfish. Because I had not given my body the vitamins, the minerals, macro and micronutrients that it needed throughout the entirety of the day, I was kind of leaning into these nighttime cravings. Obviously, I'm not a dietitian and I cannot be handing out any sort of dietary advice, but what has worked for me is making sure I'm taking care of my body throughout the day so then when nighttime rolls around, my body has already been given so many great foods that it's not really relying on those nighttime cravings as much as it had before because oftentimes cravings might come from your body not getting exactly what it needed. So really, I've just tried to prioritize having my big three meals, lots of snacks when I want them throughout the day, and also not just forgetting to have have lunch if I'm having a busy work day. That's a really bad way to establish, one, a bad relationship between you and your body, and two, a work-life balance. Stop 
take the time to eat your food, make it a point to make sure you're having your meals. If you like meals, if you like snacks, whatever, however you eat your food, but just make sure you're not just waiting until the end of the day. So your body as well taken care of. I feel like it's kind of funny. I'm starting with the tank tops, but maybe it makes the most sense because we just went through the summer season. So I can really see which pieces I don't even like anymore, which pieces I never really wore. It was so hard to do this last year because I felt like I was literally never leaving my house. So I'm like, how do I even know if I like this? I, ha I haven't had any excuses to wear it, but now we're sort of getting there. I really like all of these, help. I can probably get rid of all three of these. I've tried as much as I can to save most of my like business professional wear from my job, but I just feel like, you know what? I wore it for a very long time. I would absolutely love to not have to go back to wearing heels and blazers and business pants and stiff uncomfortable tops like this again. So as much as possible, we shall be donating. I forgot to mention, I will be donating probably most of this to my local rescue mission. If you have a rescue mission near you, I highly recommend looking into them. They're always, always needing so many items and they pretty much take absolutely everything that you will give them. Oftentimes when I go to my rescue mission, they'll also give a list of what they need themselves. So if you happen to be at your local grocery store or you're out shopping for your own goods and you happen to have the means to buy extra toothbrushes, socks, bras, underwear, things like that, those are kind of the things that I feel like I always see on the list of items. So a great place to donate most of your items. I do also have a Poshmark account. I don't use it that much, but I do have a lot of my items on there just from past cleanouts, maybe some of these. I will leave it linked in the description box below. My sister also uses it sometimes too. So like double the inventory. <laughs> Question from Brittany, what are you asking for for Christmas this year? Honestly, I'm so bad with this kind of stuff. My birthday is in like a week and I haven't told literally anybody anything that I want, anything that I'm interested in getting, just because, I don't know, I feel like when I've reached a certain age, most of the time, if I want something, I'll end up kind of putting it on my own list. Maybe I'll eventually get it for myself. I'll save up my money and maybe purchase it when the time feels right. But I also feel a little bit weird like asking for things, you know? There are a few things, especially when it comes to clothes that I'm always kind of peeking at. I've really wanted a North Face puffer for a really long time. I've been eyeing them for like six years now and I've just never actually gone out and purchased it. Like just the classic, maybe 700 fill puffers with no hood, a little bit longer than your butt so you're staying extra warm. Like that is just, oh, so stinking cute, so timeless, so easy, versatile. That's what we're talking about here. I know I want a lot more beanies. It's something I'm kind of into lately. I know, so cool of me. Honestly, I kind of want some Converse, especially for lifting days. I'm kind of getting bored of my Nikes and they're, they're seeing their final days. Like definitely the end is in the future. And if I really had to add like a humongous splurge item, I want nothing more than this absolutely gorgeous Dior bag that happens to be like 40 times my rent. It, I mean, <laughs> I can't get myself to actually purchase it, but I want it so stinking badly. I've loved it for years. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. So who knows? You know, it's called a wish list for a reason. <laughs> also for the record, in case you're thinking, I just have this humongous closet. This is not all mine. This is all of Keith's. That's most of Keith's that I kind of put some shoes on. This is all his, that's all his. He's got some shoes up there. This is really just sweatshirts, a few coats, skirts, jeans, trousers, etc. That <laughs> is all of my Christmas sweaters. We'll be seeing more of that in the Twistmas season. <laughs> that's a little bit embarrassing. I did not plan on showing that. My bags are kind of exploding. We need to be investing in some better storage, but a problem for a different year. This is like a really nice shirt and I think I kept it because I thought it would be kind of versatile, you know, like something a little dressier. I used to wear it to work all of the time. It's from Socialite, which I think I might have gotten from Nordstrom Rack. But honestly, I just don't see myself actually wearing this, so I feel like it's not worth taking up the space in my closet. Even like this shirt, I really like, but I've had it for years. It is pilling horribly. Some things you don't want to say goodbye to, but I feel like this has absolutely seen its better days. These layering tops can go. This, another work top I'm not wearing. This is like this little bodysuit I got from Zara, I want to say just last year. And I loved the way it looked online and I wore it once or twice, but it is impossible to get in and out of. There's like a weird zipper that only starts from the sleeve. So you have to somehow get yourself in it and then zip it up. But the material is the least forgiving thing in the world. And I feel like I've just gone through that phase because of 2020 and 2021 where I'm just not dealing with the uncomfortable clothes anymore. If we're going out, we're going out in style, 
that is comfortable. That's my mojo. That's how I'm approving this year. This shirt, I thrifted this forever ago and I thought it was going to be my shirt of the moment. This is so not me. I just cannot envision myself styling this in any way, shape or form. I think I should start to write the book on buying clothes that are for you, not the person that you want to be. <laughs> Thrifted this as like me, you know, going to the club, wearing this moment and thinking I was gonna pull it off. But this just isn't me and I don't need to pretend to be something that I'm not. I'm okay with growth. I'm good with pushing myself outside of my comfort zone. But when it comes to things that just aren't me and I'm not gonna feel comfortable in it, why bother? Here's some progress so far. This is making me as stressed as it's making you. This is some more additional professional wear that I would just love to wipe from my memory. Lots of hangers will soon be organized, I promise you, but feeling better. Time to conquer this section, which I'm a little bit nervous by because it's more of my everyday wear. So I feel like it's harder to advocate against it because you could easily find an excuse for it. What is your Enneagram number and love language? I'm an Enneagram nine and my love language is acts of service. I always feel like that's the most selfish love language. So I hate saying that, but I actually feel like both of those are probably intertwined because as an Enneagram nine, you're naturally a people pleaser. The nine is a peacemaker. You're naturally going to just want to keep your mouth shut, let the peace happen. So when people kind of like notice you and do things for you and go out of their way to make you feel seen, I think that's why it makes sense that that's the way that I feel loved best. Do you have any fears? I have a massive fear of balloons. Oh my gosh, how tragic. I do feel like that's an inconvenient fear, but I understand it. It's not that irrational. I have a very, very irrational fear of R-A-T-S. The word just like feels gross coming out of my mouth, so I don't prefer to say it. I know they're animals and all animals deserve love, but there's something about them that terrifies me absolutely to my core i lose all functionality i don't know how to be a nice person i'm screaming i'm crying i'm running literally taking a seat to tell this story the summer between my sophomore and my junior year of college i decided to live with my sister an intern in new york city she was working at a hospital in the city she had a studio that we decided to share and it was one of those places i've always wanted to try and live so i figured you know what let's give it a shot i have a place to live i hopefully can get a job i ended up taking a course at a local college College, and I just kind of wanted like the New York City experience. It was the time of my life. It feels like a dream that I actually lived there. It almost felt like it didn't even happen. I did everything. Like every single night we'd go and do something fun just because we could. And it also challenged me in the best way possible to learn to do things by myself. I have a huge fear of being alone. And it was just one of those times where I had to learn. It's okay to go get dinner by yourself. It's okay to just walk the city and explore and have fun and kind of learn to be your own person. Even though I was 20 years old, which was also kind of a little bit of a hard thing to do in a city full of bars, but we made it work. And it was amazing. It was absolutely incredible. Flash forward to sometime in July. It's incredibly, incredibly hot, sticky, East Coast humidity, horrible. Keith comes to visit me. It's his first time east of Idaho. So we're doing all the stops. Macy's, Bloomingdale, Statue of Liberty, Times Square, we wanted to see it all. And even at 9 p.m. at night, it was still probably 85 degrees, 1000% humidity. It was just horrible. And what I did not know was that in New York, when things get very hot, a lot of uh, critters come out more than they normally would because it gets so stinking hot beneath the subway tracks where they normally uh, live. So I take Keith to Herald Square. We're getting onto the subway. It's probably 10 p.m. at night. We just had a lovely dinner. We're enjoying ourselves. And I'm like, you know what? We need to get home the fastest way possible. Let's take the subway entrance right here. So we see our closest subway entrance. We go down the stairs. And one of the first things that we see is a rat climbing up the stairs, as in coming out from the subway up to the city streets. And at that point, you know, I should have just known to turn around. I should have just screamed bloody murder, ran for my life and not continued down the stairs. However, it was very late. We were very poor. The subway is a lot less expensive than taking a taxi, an Uber, etc. And I wanted to get the frick home. So we decided, you know what? A rare occasion, probably just one rat. What are the odds we're going to see more? We saw not one, not two, not three, not four, but 13, 13 rats 
climbing all over this platform. I can't even talk about this, like in this tight space. They were climbing up the pillars. They were all over the stairs. They were going onto the platform. They were like conversing with the local New Yorkers. And you know, when you see a New York rat, it's not like a normal country rat, let's say. <laughs> These rats are eaten well. They are the size of cats. They are massive. And they just come in families, in packs of 90. We are standing on that platform for what felt like my entire life. Of course, the closest subway was probably eight minutes away, which in subway time is eight years. And in rat time has to be 80 centuries. But <laughs> to this day, I don't know when I retell this story why I chose to stand at that platform, but I really and truly believe I was so stunned, I did not do anything. I, I couldn't think, I couldn't move. I thought if I went anywhere else, there was going to be more. They were going to attack, they were going to jump on me. I couldn't think properly. And of course, Keith is next to me, like kind of chuckling, kind of like trying to look around to see more of the rats, and I am just yelling at him like, don't you freaking dare leave my side. Oh my gosh. I lost all of my marbles that night. All of my marbles were left at that subway station. To this day, I will not go back to that subway stop. Absolutely the heck no. Honestly, I don't wear this shirt. I wish I did. I thrifted it and I thought I was going to wear it. I am emotionally exhausted, but I just, I can't wear crop tops like this. Not getting rid of this, but need to show off my prized possession. <laughs> and my second prize possession. I've also probably owned this for, I don't know, like six years and I've maybe worn it once. So I think that's telling enough. You are going in the pile. And yes, I am standing on this little platform. <laughs> All right, I'm really dreading this part, especially because I've done a whole video on this before. And I think you're going to be quite disappointed in me that a lot of the things I said I was going to get rid of might possibly still be in this drawer because attachment issues. I also just hate feeling like I spent $30 on leggings and then I'm just going to what? Get rid of them? Madness. Like if there's no holes, if they still work as protections over my two legs and my bum, then why would I get rid of them? But I'm starting to realize if it does not make me feel confident, if it does not give me joy, if it does not serve me, because these clothes are not meant to do anything more than make me feel good about myself. I do not live to fit into these clothes. These clothes will serve me, and if they no longer do, we get rid of them. That needs to be the hard and fast true motto. We can start with like the obvious, which are these gorgeous chai leggings. As much as I love this brand and this style and this type of legging, like they look white. They're supposed to be a very light tan, I believe, but it just looks like I'm wearing white leggings. I cannot do it, I cannot. They need to be gone and I'm very sad about it because they're good leggings. I just can't get myself to do it. It's the exact same thing with these, which I did mention in my last video I was going to be getting rid of. Here's the thing. These are the Gymshark Ombre seamless leggings and everything about the material, the fit, I'm obsessed with. It is this color scheme that makes me nauseous. If they were the opposite, like maybe a little bit of pink and then gray on the bottom, maybe a different story. But I think it's just these light patterns don't look good on me. And I'm realizing as much as I enjoy this fit, if I really like it, I can get a fit that is in a better color that I love and I pick out of my drawer every stinking time. A good old classic question from Amina, what is your favorite workout? Okay, if we're thinking like workout days, days that I get the most excited to go to the gym, I genuinely enjoy every single movement, probably back day, pole day. Working on your back, most beautiful thing ever. There's something about it that feels very natural and almost empowering, and it's giving enough effort that it makes you tired, but it doesn't absolutely strip you of every ounce of your energy like leg day does. As much as I want to be a leg day girly, it will never be me. Leg day rips me to shreds. I am a different human being before and after leg day because it just rips my whole heart out. It takes every ounce of my effort to perform well, to give everything to that workout. I need like 90 Rice Krispie treats before and after. Favorite post-workout meal, also a great question. 
Normally, like when I come back from the gym, I would say I want something that's going to be a quick meal. It's going to kind of refill all of my energy stores as quickly as possible, but it's not going to take so much effort out of me because I just gave every ounce of me to that leg workout or whatever. I usually do something like a sweet potato with eggs and spinach, mixed greens, arugula, something like that. If I have some Green Chef, like some of the meals that I'll get sent over, then I'll do something like that because then I know it's a very well-balanced meal and it's kind of decided for me. I just put the rest together. I also love making like my big ginormous yogurt bowls where I stir in my protein powder, I put all my berries, frozen mangoes, maybe some granola if I have it. Like something like that always sounds very refreshing to me after a workout. Sometimes smoothies if I do a morning workout too. But smoothies are tricky because you have to be so creative with them. This one kind of makes me sad, but I feel like I've grown out of these leggings. They used to be like my tried and trues. I wore these all the time. I'd say they were an early Gymshark purchase of mine for sure. And there's really not that much wrong with them, but I don't know why I like try and venture into the color department and clearly we're noticing a pattern here. I just don't think I feel as confident in them as I used to. I don't think the cuts and the creases kind of fit my legs, maybe as they'd fit somebody else, maybe somebody taller. And that's all right. Like there's nothing wrong with these, but They've served me well for the time I've had them, and that's all I could ask. Oh my gosh, even this shirt. I love this material, I love the style. I also have the leggings and the sports bra, now that I'm thinking of it. But I think the cut is just too long for me. Like it goes too long, but it's too tight, so it doesn't flow. It just kind of sucks in around my hips or my butt, and I don't, I don't think it's that flattering. Oh, same thing with this one, desperately needs to go. And this, like this is a hand-me-down from my sister. It's a Puma shirt that the logo is so faded. This has to be centuries old. Some, sometimes that grosses me out if I really think about it. Oh my gosh, I desperately need to refold all of these. This is making me sick pulling these all out. Also, I feel like this is kind of growth and pulling all of these out to give a second chance. I'll try them on. I honestly don't know if I remember how I feel in them. And I think that's important. Maybe we're gonna breathe new life into them, but these are TBD for stink and sure. Question from Betsy. I used to live in Seattle and not know anyone. How do you deal with a seasonal depression? <laughs> honestly, I feel like it's a lot for me. I talk about it, I think a lot, one on my podcast and two on my TikTok account because I found sometimes it's very helpful to express those sorts of things because then you kind of realize you're not as alone as you think you are. And also so many people have incredible tips to offer because you're not the only person that's experienced that before. I never realized what a privilege it was to grow up in a sunny climate all of the time. You don't deal with dark winters, dark falls, daylight savings times, like not that big of a deal in Southern California. Yes, of course it's still gonna get dark at like four or 5 p.m., but it doesn't affect you as much because all day long it was sunshine and glorious and Christmas day still might be 80 degrees. Some of the best tips that I've gotten are one, utilizing as much daylight as I can while it's there. If it happens to be a sunny day, but maybe it's still cold outside, get outside, sit by the window, work in front of the window, maybe try and arrange your sleeping schedule as best as possible to work around that circadian rhythm. Go on your outdoor walks, go on runs outside, do an outdoor workout. Getting house plants, that's a great one. It kind of gives you a little bit of a purpose and activity, especially if you get kind of more mild and gentle plants that are easier to take care of and ones that go well in the house with not that much natural light needed. But I kind of love that because it makes me feel like, okay, I need to get up, I need to get going because I have to take care of things and make sure things in my house are going well, my plants are doing well, I'm watering them, I'm feeding them. Journaling, writing down what you're grateful for every single day, calling your friends, FaceTiming people, calling your family. Realizing that just because it's dark and it's not as sunny doesn't mean that your day has to be over. You can still carry on with all of your favorite activities just with a little modification. And then of course, like if you really need it, you can do things like sitting in front of a happy lamp. I sit in front of a happy lamp almost every single day for about 30 minutes or so. I just sit with it maybe when I'm having my morning coffee. It makes me feel a little bit more recharged, more rejuvenated. It kind of is supposed to give off like a similar vibe as the sun might. Obviously it's not a perfect replacement, but it does honestly help. Then there's vitamin D supplements. And then maybe if you need it, asking for professional help and maybe even getting medication. That's an okay route and it's definitely, definitely encouraged. All right, time to conquer the chair, face my fears, let's do this thing. <laughs> oh my god, I actually just felt. I have a confession though. This portion of the video is actually being filmed the following day, but I have a good excuse, okay? I have a very good excuse. <laughs>
In case you do not follow me on TikTok and or Instagram, I highly encourage you to do so at this very moment because you quite possibly missed the real time freak out, nervous breakdown, story time explanation of what happened to me and why I decided three hours before showtime to see the one and only Harry Styles love on tour. That is my excuse for why I did stop cleaning for the night, but I felt like it was a good enough excuse. Hopefully you're not too mad at me about it, but if you want the full story, I'll be telling it beginning to end with all the juicy details on next week's podcast. However, for the quick little synopsis, head over to TikTok or Instagram. I promise you, you will not be disappointed for the journey that we went on together. <laughs> This is the kind of pile that is like the most absolute overwhelming thing ever. And I do it to myself. Like some things I should try on and if I don't like it, I hang it right back up. But instead, you know, you let this pile for like two days and all of a sudden it's a monsoon. Plus like some of this is Keats, but I'm like, don't worry about it. I'll do it because I'm so caring, so nice. This isn't a question, but if I had to give one piece of advice right now, it would be to get rid of that one chair in your room or whatever surface you throw your clothes on. These are all clean. Like there is no reason they need to be anywhere other than put on hangers and shoved back into the closet. But a question from Lauren. Do you wish you started making YouTube videos earlier? Love your videos. Thank you so much. You know, for the longest time, I really did. I honestly thought I missed out. I totally messed up. I should have started in middle school like I wanted to. I should have started in high school. I should have done it in college. But you can't continually live your life like that where you're constantly mad at yourself for not doing something sooner. I'm thankful that I even did it to begin with. And some days it's very surreal that I even started. We're getting rid of it. Never mind. Never mind. It has a hole. I was trying to advocate for it. Goodbye. But from like a content perspective, I didn't know what I was doing, even in my fitness journey, let's say, this time last year. I don't even think I knew what I was doing three or four months ago. So it would have probably been maybe like not even a safe thing if I had that sort of toxic content on the internet that I would have been unintentionally promoting because as I've talked about before in my fitness journey, so much of what I was told, I instantly believed, especially when I was a teenage girl. And it was often quick, fad diets, endless diet cycles, random trending eight week programs, everything based in aesthetics and the way that your body looks. And that is just not my mentality anymore. So I'm grateful that now I can be in a place where hopefully the content that I make is a lot more empowering or inspiring, or maybe at least in some ways, it is different from what I was taught at those ages that I wanted to start my YouTube channel. Peep last year's merch, pretty cute, right? It'd be pretty crazy if we did it again this year, right? This is a really great question. What ended up being your favorite leg day legging? Fantastic, okay. So not too long ago, I posted on my Instagram story that I have always been in search of the perfect leg day legging. I think sometimes, just like for this video, I'm going through my drawer and I want every legging to be suitable for leg day. Because why would I purchase a legging that's only going to be complimentary to me or like it's not squat proof for half of my workouts? Doesn't make any sense. So as I do in most situations, I turn to you all for some help and I asked you what are some of your favorite leg day leggings? The ones that never ever fail you, the ones that you are upset about when you find out they're still in the laundry. That's what I want to know. If you did not get a chance to answer that, please, for the love of all that is holy, leave your submission in the comments down below. Now the ones that I actually ended up trying out myself were the Alpha Lead Amplify leggings, mainly because one, it was probably the most submitted option by you all, and two, they've been on my list for a while. I've wanted to try them, so I thought, serendipitous, let's do it. I did post a full unboxing try-on haul review on my TikTok, so if you'd like to watch that, please go ahead and do so. I would say the only thing that I'm a little bit nervous about is the fact that I probably paid $87 with tax, shipping, etc., which I 
sort of belief is a little bit outrageous. And then I was getting some comments that people have had their leggings rip, particularly in the one place that it shouldn't. And that bothers me because why are you selling that price of leggings if they're going to be known to rip or if they do rip? I haven't looked into like any type of warranty or anything. I'm just absolutely praying that I picked the right size. That doesn't happen to me. Maybe that was a few faulty pairs, but either way, I don't like that. But on a more positive note, I had a great first impression. I thought that they were fantastic very form-fitting, very flattering. And at least, you know, in the first impressions department, I was pretty impressed. Not that that pile is anything close to good. However, I will say a bulk of that is really puffy outerwear, jacket, sweatshirt, sweaters. So the progress that we're making, oh my gosh, I'm on camera. It looks like there's no progress being made, but I promise we've got some organization here and it's not as bad as I was anticipating. If you do happen to be following my wellness tips, I would refer back to tip number five, where you can set, let's say a five, 10 minute timer and just tackle tasks like this on a much more daily basis. So then you don't have a yellow chair that still looks like this after you took a majority of it off. Hello, my scrumptious. Hello. Okay, maybe this is a cute question to end on. What do you think the next step or growth for you is next in life or fitness venture? You know, Honestly, I truly think my last two years, like most of us, has been such a whirlwind that everything just kind of happened so suddenly. Any plan that I had for the future was kind of very much thrown off course, you know? I definitely did not expect to be doing content creation full time. I truly thought I was gonna become a manager at my last job, or that was something that I really wanted to do, or I even had planned on like switching departments. I wanted to work in events more because I was mainly doing sales. So sometimes I feel like I'm not the biggest fan of like, let's say a five year plan, because I couldn't have predicted this sort of lifestyle right now. And I have never been more grateful for anything in my entire life. But now that we are here and we're absolutely just trying to better ourselves in every way possible, my goal right now is to honestly find more ways that I can genuinely help people. And I would love to take that from a less, I guess, intangible experience like YouTube videos to something a lot more hopefully impactful. Don't get it wrong. Don't get it twisted. I truly never plan on, at least in the near future, walking away from YouTube. I feel like I love it absolutely so stinking much and I really could not imagine myself walking away from this platform. That being said, at this point, I'm still doing two videos a week, which is quite a lot. Like if you really think about some of your favorite content creators, if they're pumping out a lot of content per week, they're either absolutely creatively driven and talented in every way possible. They probably have a lot of help, a team of editors, producers, etc. Or maybe it's just the sole thing that they do. And I think eventually, if I have plans to do things off this platform, it would make sense to either cut down to one video per week or hire out additional help if I ever get the means to do something like that. Cause that's just how you end up having to create your business, be sustainable. You hire people that are smarter than yourself. I feel like I'm being so wordy. Really what I mean is let's say I'm working with clients one-on-one -on -one for their fitness journey. Maybe I'm doing like very impactful collaborations with brands where maybe we can give back and we can donate to organizations that I'm really passionate about, or I'm making a product that I think is truly going to benefit people more than just me folding my clothes in front of the camera venting to you all. Do you see what I mean? I mean, I wouldn't change any of this for anything, but I wanna be able to give you more and I wanna be able to just give my heart and soul to everything that I do. So in order to do that, I've gotta keep studying for my certification, which I've now concluded I will be taking the test after the new year. I had originally planned on trying to squeeze it in, around the holidays, but now that I'm doing Twistmas, there's just like 
absolutely no way in heck that would ever happen and I don't want to cram for it. I want to make sure that this is something that I'm genuinely learning because that's why I started it in the first place, for fun. I mean, bottom line, I would just love to continue creating in every way possible but also provide more meaning, more value, more helpful, smart, science-backed content that will take me time to learn how to do perfectly. But that's hopefully where I see myself. I just want to keep getting better, going up, providing more for you and doing the best that I can. Okay, y'all, here we go. I did it all. I cleared the chair, spot the dog. <laughs> and now I just have to hang it up, which is an entirely different problem. Maybe for a different day. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out so stinking much. Subscribe to the channel. I love you all. I will see you at the next one.